Let's see the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Welcome. And we head straight to our second conversation. We look at the issue of zoning and who should become president of Nigeria come 2023. Uh, now with President Muhammad Buhari serving out his second term in 2023, there's been a barrage of questions on the yardstick that should be used in picking his successor. While some are clamoring for uh, be for others, uh, for religious balance, others are ensuring that you have a Christian or Muslim. A good number of people are also pursuing for youth as president. In the midst of all of this, there's also a growing support for the selection of Nigeria's next president uh, to come from the South, North, West, East. And so joining us this morning is a political scientist. Uh, all things being equal, we have Dr. Mark Fallon join us. But we do have Austin Jessar uh, on standby. It's good to have you join us this this morning. Good morning, Austin. Thank you for having me. Good morning to you. Okay, so uh, let's talk about this. Good morning to you. All right, thank you so much. So we go, let's get straight to this conversation. The issue of zoning and the issue of competence is a strong one. As much as a lot of persons have argued that zoning would not allow for, um, it would disenfranchise or would just not allow a lot of Nigerians, uh, you know, to aspire to become president. And so it disqualifies them or does not allow them that space. And some people say this is not a democratic practice. But you want to agree with me that zoning has been going on for a very long time in this country. And, uh, you know, so it gets to this particular point now. The question is still ongoing, whether it should go to the south or to the north or to the southwest or the southeast. Uh, your thoughts. Do you think that zoning is the solution? We should choose that as against competence? Well, I would say we should choose zoning against competence. I mean, that would be um, very um, unreasonable, it seems to say. Um, but I'll say that we should choose competence in zoning. Um, that is to say that there is no zone in Nigeria that cannot produce competent people, um, just so that there can be a great you know, balance of power and you know, the development can also spread across the nation you know, um, properly. Um, you find that, you know, it's lopsided, you find that um, there's dominance in, you know, the whole equation. So, um, even though zoning is not a constitutional discussion in terms of um, being embedded in our constitution, um, we know that, um, you know, zoning, like you said, has been going on as gentlemen's agreement in the past, and we think that um, it's, a, it's, it's a good thing, you know, if um, there will be respect for that agreement, that silent unwritten agreement, um, so that, um, you know, there won't be um, too much rancor and acrimony, so that there will be, you know, great spread and balance of power, so that it can be as rotational as possible. Um, but in zoning, let there be competence, you know, not just that um, because we said it should be zoned to zone A or B, just go bring it just about anybody and say, come be our president. The office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a very um, serious job, especially in these times when we are at our all-time lowest point in the history of Nigeria. So we want to talk about, you know, competence in zoning, not just zoning over competence. I get all that you've said, um, Austin, uh, um, competence in zoning and not just um, an outright um, zoning. But when do we as a country get to the point where it's not about um, whether you're an Igbo man or whether you are a Yoruba man, a Hausa man, or from the South South or you know, even the North Central? What will it be about um, someone who has the interest of uh, uh, the nation at heart, someone who has um, the pedigree, someone who just wants to see the nation develop, the nation grow? You know, can we ever, do you think we can ever come to that point when it will be about um, let the best man roll? Well, uh, I think that that's, that's the discussion for the future. But at this time, you know, we do know that we are not at that mature state yet. Um, there's a whole lot of religious, a whole lot of tribal, a whole lot of ethnic sentiments going on. So we allow this to continue, um, Nigeria is going to be worse for it. I mean, all the service chiefs, for instance, cannot you know, possibly come from one section of the country. It is not because you know, you're in power and then um, every, every sensitive officer that is going to be appointed will have to come from your own you know, ethnic um, background. 
that is not the kind of country you know we we, we we want to run so until we get to the point where we are mature enough to say look you know as a president of the federal republic of nigeria you are not from one particular um zone of the country you are a, 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 as it were a product of every part of nigeria you know every part owns you you are a public property as it were and therefore you should give equal representation and equal leadership and equal opportunities to every part of this country including nigerians who are in the diaspora because you represent us all and not where you come from necessarily but at this point i am afraid we are not at that majority stage yet so but you understand that this issue of zoning does not happen out of the space uh it has to happen you know we're talking about political parties here and so in the case where you have uh, you know a political party different political parties as it were but of course we know we have uh two dominant party that's what it looks like and that's what it is uh you know by the records that we have so but do, do you think that this political parties also should be having this conversation as regards zoning because for instance now let's take for an example the elections uh the convention that just finished and we see the, the uh you know national chairman of the apc that emerged as uh, an agreement of course the consensus agreement so um in a, in in situations like this do you still have zoning and competence working hand in hand how do you achieve that Austin. Well, I mean, um, politics is about discussions. Politics is about negotiation. Can, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Great. With your so thoughts. I was saying that politics is about discussions. Politics is about negotiations. Politics is about sitting down at the round table and having an agreement and having some kind of referendum, some kind of, you know, um, a point of meeting you know otherwise they will just continue to be run i mean look at how long it took the apc for instance you know to get done with this convention um there's all manners of internal you know issues in all the in, in the major um, two parties of the country and that's because they're not talking and they're not able to come to agreement but if there is a gentleman's agreement to say look um these are the cards on the table and these are how you know we're going to deal them to you know everybody to make sure that as much as possible we get close to uh, representing everybody's interest you know as we can and then the country can move forward i mean there can be progress or development in the face of rancor in the face of anarchy so the first thing we want to do is to make sure that there is peace there's understanding there is calm in the policy and then we can begin to think and put the round um, pegs in the round hole but um the country right now does not have that, you know, um, proper balance and spread of power. And that's the agitation. We are saying that there is no, even the minorities can have a very competent person. Nigerians are very intelligent, you know, and, you know, highly um, resourceful people. So actually we can find competent people just about everywhere. But we are saying that, you know, these discussions should, you know, be um, sincere so that um, every um, zone, every aspect of of the country can be carried along you know in the in the in the discussion of national progress and, and development all right good thing you've talked about um, peace uh, good thing you've talked about understanding uh, you've talked about um, agreement uh, politics um, being about agreement but how far do you go about um, agreements uh, within agreements? Let me paint a scenario here right now for instance uh, there's a talk of um, zoning with the People's Democratic Party Let's say, for instance, now, uh, there is an agreement that um, it should be uh, zoned to the southeast uh, geopolitical zone. Don't you think other issues might come out? Uh, should it be from Emo state? Shouldn't it be from Abia state or from Enugu state or from Anambra state? Just how far can you go with these agreements? Well, I mean, it's a continuous process, isn't it? Um, the, the major thing is, you know, what we call um, the, 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 um, the macro zoning, if you like, you know, and then within the southeast, for instance, they can now begin to say, look, let us also micro zone this, you know, further. Um, let it not be Enugu state, let it be Imo state, let it not be Imo state, let it be Adbia state. That's their discussion. Okay, also, I mean, there? that's uh, not what Nigerians are interested in. But what we are saying is, if, 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 the, if the South East have been 
given a slot, let them produce someone for us or let them raise. Hello? Oh, are you still there? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. You know, so because I'm thinking that uh, it, it's a very valid yeah, point. So, it, 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 um, so it's a very valid point that you have raised. I mean, it sounds very brilliant if you ask me that we can achieve zoning and competence at the same time. Uh, because you say that you do not believe in just uh, zoning. I mean, you will never choose zoning over competence. Competence any day is what we're talking about. But I think that it's almost impossible to achieve that in a system where you understand that even at the political system or at the political party level, you would always have interest. I mean, within the party level, at the party structure, you have people who have interest. And sometimes the interest is not necessarily, um, the, the interest of some of these persons in, at the party level does not necessarily reflect the interest of the nation or even the interest of the party. At the end of the day, so it's the interest of the individual or those who call the shots at the party level. So um, I, I think that it might just be almost impossible to achieve, um, you know, competence and uh, zoning at the same time, not because we don't have brilliant people or intelligent persons in different parts of the country, but because you have a system where, you know, all of this has to happen within a political party and, you know, you have a party structure. And because of the way the party is structured in Nigeria, where you still have uh, some governors, you still have, you know, people calling the shots of these political parties. And so there's no democracy uh, at the party level. So all of this cannot even, I don't see this happening. Anyway. Well, um, that is the irony of the Nigerian political picture. Um, I have been involved in an election before as a person, and I know that, you know, in all humility and modesty, I was more competent than the gentleman who eventually emerged. And the same discussion of party supremacy um, played out. Um, so I would agree, while I would agree with you that it is difficult, the world is difficult and not impossible. It is difficult to get um, absolute competence, you know, in, you know, whether it's zoning or not zoning in Nigeria's system of politics. But, you know, we will get there. I believe that we'll get there. You know, we'll continue to have this discussion. We'll continue to drive it home and portray that even if, you know, the party, the party wants to, you know, impose a candidate on us, let it be someone who is, um, you know, fairly credible and competent to do the job, for instance. I mean, look at what is happening in Anambra State. Um, who, 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 who think that Abga, you know, pretty much imposed Soludo on, you know, um, the people of Abga in Anambra State. But Soludo, in my opinion, is a competent fellow. So, you know, that's something we can take, you know, um, uh, with, with two hands open. So if we have party supremacy bringing candidates of competence, then we can live with that. But right, if we have you party, awesome. you know, in the name of supremacy... Uh, Passing down people down our throats who we know are not competent and not resourceful, don't have any business occupying those lofty offices, who will continue to resist, who will continue to have this discussion, and will continue to cry All out right. until we can arrive as a nation. All right, thank you so much, uh, Austin Ajasa, for your comments there. Indeed, uh, we need to try to strike a balance between zoning and competence as we head to the polls in 2023. We do appreciate your time on the show this morning. Very many thanks for having me in. All right, that's uh, the size of the show for today. We must say a very big thank you to all of our guests uh, who have joined uh, to contribute to all of the comments as we uh, uh, move towards a credible elections in 2023. My name is Justin Akadone. And if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel as at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Thanks for watching.